Today, we're going to take a look at the Mystic. Or Wizards in Space. Hello everyone, welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games, so if that's something you're into, love to have you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when my content is available. Today we're going to take a look at one of the three caster classes, and I'm going to be talking about the Mystic today. If you haven't seen my video on the Witch Warper, then I suggest you check that out up here. They are also one of the other caster classes. I really like the Mystic class. It's one of the more versatile classes that you can play. There are many different ways that you can actually build a Mystic. One of the options that the book gives you when you're looking at these classes, and it's even a suggested or created build for you, this would be the Xeno Druid, or Druids in Space. That never gets old, right? The Mystic doesn't see what they do as actually magic. Others who are maybe not as intelligent would call it magic, but a mystic wouldn't. The way a mystic describes it is they can sense the connection between things, or they get their power source from their deity, thus making them a conduit for their god's power. To a mystic, these connections are just something that they can naturally see or manipulate. And as such, the mystic key ability score is wisdom and they are a little bit more sturdy than your average glass cannon. They do have six hit points to start off with, which is a middle of the road kind of number. They will also get six plus their constitution modifier for stamina hit points. Like I said, they're not necessarily a frontline fighter, but they're no pushover either. The Mystic will actually gain a boatload of skills at character creation, and they will start off with six plus their intelligent modifier for ranks. Although I just said that they're not necessarily a frontline fighter, you will find that the starting proficiencies are more geared towards making them a frontline fighter. They'll start off with some basic melee weapons, some small arms, and some light armor proficiencies. At first level, you get to pick your connection power. And this is going to set the tone for your mystic class that you're building. So what type of connections can you select? The core rulebook will give you a base set of connections to look through, and the character operations manual will expand upon it. In the core rulebook, we have the Akashic. This would also be known as the Pokedex. The Empath. No sign of toxic masculinity here. The Healer. The Mindbreaker or Psyops, the Overlord, Underlords Need Not Apply, Star Shaman, or Space Voodoo, the Xeno Druid, or as I like to call it, Space Druid, the Mellophile, or Bard, Space Bard, I guess, and the Warmonger, or Lord of War. Important note, once you have picked your connection, that connection power will give you a bonus in two associated skills, and the spells your connection grants you do not count towards your known spells total, so they're in addition to. I made this mistake a little earlier when I was playing. The Mystic also has scalable spells. There's a few of them, and let's cover them right now just so you know how they operate. If we're to take a look at Mystic Cure, which is one of the connection spells if you pick Healer, you'll notice when you're looking at the spell that it goes from level one to six. The way this works, if you can only cast first level spells and you have Mystic Cure, it will take up a first level spell slot and function as normal. When you're able to cast second level spells, you can take Mystic Cure at its second level. It will occupy a second level spell slot, which removes itself from your level one spell slot and you can learn a new spell. The interesting thing is because you now know it at level two, you can cast it at level two for one of your level two spell slots, or you can cast it at level one for one of your level one spell slots taking the results as if you cast it at first level. This continues all the way on until level six. The Mystic has quite a few spells that are designed like this, another one being Polymorph. Another spell that you should probably take if you're playing Mystic, regardless of your connection, would be Mind Thrust. This is one of the most overpowered spells in the entire game. It is a scaled spell, as I've just described for Mystic Cure, but the amount of damage that this spell can deal is absolutely ridiculous, especially when there's no hit roll. Most of the Mystic spells do not require you to roll dice, aside from the damage. 
which means when you want to cast the spell, it just happens. And the best that the enemy can do is take half damage. But for a mind thrust at first level, that's 2d10 of damage. That's, a, that's an insane amount of damage, especially at low levels. And at second level, that moves up to 4d10 and so on and so on and so on. If you're taking a mystic, you should almost always have mind thrust because of how just sort of broken and overpowered it is. So what should you do for a build when it comes to the mystic? Well, you have quite a few options. To be able to cast the highest level spells for mystic, you have to have a wisdom of 16, that's it. It won't give you a ton of spells known per day if you do keep it at 16, but you will eventually be able to cast the highest levels of spells. If you're looking to make more of a melee type build, you can do that. You just have to put some of your build points from character creation into strength and dexterity to accommodate for that. And of course, upgrade your feats along the way. What I've seen most people do and what most people will recommend is that a mystic take long arm proficiency. This allows the mystic to deal damage from range as most of their spells, not all, but quite a few of them, are actually considered quite short range and you have to be quite close to be able to use them. See Mind Thrust. And then of course the other build that you can do is to focus solely on your spell abilities and really max out that wisdom score. This is what I've chosen to do for my character in my Starfinder game that I'm playing with some friends of mine. I've really, really focused on getting that wisdom score up so that I can know as many spells and cast as many spells as possible because Mind Thrust. What kind of race should you play for your Mystic? It depends, are you looking for that Wisdom build and really wanting to max out your spell abilities? Or are you wanting something that's going to offset more of that either a melee build or a gunfighter build? that you can add and be supported with your spells. It really depends on what you're gonna go for with this. I don't have some solid options to pick from because there's just so many. This has been a Maple Table look at the Mystic. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you did, hit that like button as that really does help this channel grow with the YouTube algorithm. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I do release content twice a week around Starfinder and Werewolf the Apocalypse. Up on the screen now, there's a playlist that should show of classes that I've talked about for Starfinder. And popping up now is a video that YouTube thinks that you would enjoy. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.